how many of you are just experiencing this existential angst just in your body you're not maybe directionless or feeling pointless or not necessarily useful or usable and you know you may not be firing off on all circuits right it might not be that there's something wrong with you it may be that there's an emotional blockage or a mental clog or a spiritual um, release required or a physical change in the worldview or perspective about something that could just like open up the doorways. And just as I said that, there's a, a young lady that I'm working with that every single time there's five or six different people and different stories at the beginning of each session. And it's never about her or nurturing her or her boundaries for herself or how she's taking care of herself. It's all about how these situations frustrate her and people are really mean, terrible, and awful. And the situations she's describing are pretty mean, terrible, and awful. And it's so interesting to me that after almost 30 years of working with people, one thing I know is that the only thing that stays the same is change. That hasn't changed. <laughs> but the second thing I know is that when someone like this woman comes on the session and every single time without fail, they're talking about all these other people and the same kind of pattern and scenario where they're wronged and treated poorly and frustrated about it and not knowing how to handle the situation. Every single time I get someone like that, we can track it back to a time in their childhood that seems like the same situation, just different characters. Seems like the same feelings, just different characters. <laughs> Feels the same way in the body, just different characters. And the whole thing is they've never felt it back then. And they're only feeling the anger of it now. And we're able to process back then when they're nine and 13 and 11. Again, this is not recapitulating the trauma. This is actually healing and changing at the root cause of the trauma, why they're so triggered in the present. These stories I'm telling you are not just to, for me to tell you about them for me and like, ooh, I'm, I'm the best. It's a privilege to work with people and to be a part of their, their journey. If what you've listened to is something that you like, please comment in the, in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear from you. And it gives me feedback about what we're doing. And you could even give us feedback about what we're doing. <laughs> you know, like I get a lot of thank you for this video or, you know, right on and that really helped. And I'm so grateful for that. I never thought of it that way. Those are wonderful comments. That and more. You know, even just pressing the like button <laughs> is great or the thumbs up. That tells me that you like it. And that helps us like as I'm doing more of these. I really want to speak to these moments of mental health awareness, wellness, because it really is a moment by moment choice. Even for myself, it's a moment by moment choice to keep my mental health at a level that works for me. <laughs> like the button if you know this. Have you ever had those mental health, a mental health moment where you're like, I know better. I know I can change this feeling. I know this feeling isn't real. I know I'm regurgitating on the past or I'm spinning on something and I'm kind of watching it and I'm feeling it and I can't stop it. It's just going to be there until it's not. And then all of a sudden it's not there and you're forward to the you that you know. Have you ever experienced that? Even you, even though you know so much about what that pattern or what that thing is, sometimes that's just life being lifey. And it kind of sucks, but it's kind of giving you information like, you know, there's something else here for you to take a look at. So if you're judging yourself too harshly about you should be there when you're over here or you're still getting stuck into that, you know, I would say be more kind. Do something nice to yours, for to yourself and for yourself. And if you are in those moments where you just can't 
like the sunlight of the spirit is just gone and you're just getting lower and lower and lower and lower. Don't know, know where there's like a, a put my hand up, like safe word, <laughs> be your own safe word. Okay. And stop it and reach out for some mental health, help, contribution, support, and collaboration. Granted, most people, when they are listened to with two ears versus spoken to through their one mouth, when they're just received, but whatever they have going on, it takes a weight off of them. And then whatever was so big becomes smaller and they feel more in control to do something about it. So the best part about speaking out and seeking help and support is that you're not carrying it by yourself. I was just working with this new person today who we quantified that he was carrying about 3,500 energies, like other people's energies that wasn't even related to him. And he was just kind of wearing it like a Halloween costume. Like he didn't come into the session saying, oh, Dr. Lisa, I know I'm 3,500. No, 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 no. <laughs> we had to do some digging to get that. And he was shocked. And then when we did some of the work in the, in the therapeutic part of the, the session to release it, to discuss it, to problem solve it, and to transform it, at the end of the session, he was like, whoa, my whole chest and my whole shoulders where he was carrying it all, I feel like I can breathe again. And I feel like a weight has been lifted off. That's transformation. That's healing. And that's simply just talking about what you have going on in that moment. Me, that's what mental health, what I am as a mental health advocate. That's what I do. I contribute to you taking the weight off of you, showing you what that weight was and teaching you how not to carry that, whether it's a unconscious decision you made, a belief system you believe about yourself and tragedy or a trauma that occurred that is really difficult to maneuver beyond abuses of all sorts. They're insidious addictions. They're baffling and they're cunning. And we lie to ourselves. And with some of these more egregious traumas and abuses and addictions and things like that, we can really self-inflict a lot of pain on, on us. And sometimes just another voice coming in and saying, hey, check yourself before you wreck yourself and let's get some more information about this. And may I offer you a different perspective? That by far is what I've gotten mostly in almost 30 years now. Dr. Lisa, I can't believe I'm remembering this. I've never talked about it. This gentleman I work, not the one I've already talked about, but this new gentleman, another new gentleman that he couldn't make the couple session. So I saw the wife. And then I didn't want to go into couples without seeing the male first individually, just for fairness and equalness. And so they can each have me on their side, not, oh, you had a session with my wife before I came in. Sometimes it could be a little difficult. So I had a session with him before I'm coming to meet them couples. And he was a little itchy scratchy at first. And he's like, I don't really talk about things. And uh, I know that what I create in my life is what I create in my life. And I still deal with it and like just dead, nowhere to go. And I really just listened. I asked him questions, just general questions. And little by little, his philosophy and me understanding his philosophy, just by asking questions to understand him a little bit more, opened him up to a very detailed trauma he had never processed about when he was 20 something. And after that and processing through some of that and, and deepening into the vulnerability with me and me deepening into the vulnerability with him, he was like, wow, this was, this was good. This surprised me and I'm looking forward to uh, doing more. And it's more about the fact that he got to that place. That's what, to me, therapy is really about, that you get to that space that says, yeah, there's something here that, that, that could help. 
my marriage, my life, and me. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Like, whoa. You know, and that's just about, what is it? Connection? Care? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything because that's really what it is. Like, you know, I think so many of us, well, actually I have an interesting perspective that we all just want to be loved, adored, nurtured, cherished, honored, and respected. And if I just do that, as I'm sitting here listening to you, you know, he literally said, thank you for not judging me. I really felt that. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, man, judgment doesn't belong here. People go to therapy to get rid of their judgment. Can you imagine if they go to therapy and they're, they're judged? Judgment doesn't work for healing. <laughs> Long story short. So thumbs up, please. The like button, comment. Let me know that this is contributing to you or if there's something you would like me to speak to in our mental health moment um, series that we're going to be doing on and off here. And remember to subscribe, share this, hit the bell uh, to know when I'm going live and let me know what really hit you and what really struck you and what, what, what you might, what thoughts you want to share about it. And if, if something you found useful came out of it, I would love to know.